dear students we are on the cec gurukul lecture in today's topic we are discussing the e by m ratio we are in the series of experimental physics and today's topic is electron ch charge mass ratio we are calculating by using the e by m apparatus now we are discussing the behavior of the magnetic field for the e by m ratio the magnetic field as we know that it does not change the speed of the electron in this case but it modifies the trajectory of the electron with depending upon the magnitude of b magnitude of b means how much magnetic field we are applying then its basic basic path will change but speed will remain same those so following conditions are arises so here on the screen we are having a diagram which explain the various positions when the various magnetic field applied now if we take b is equal to 0 in the first condition the electron will move radially outwards and strike the anode and at anode we apply the apply the voltage and then it will the electrons will accelerate it in the second condition b less than bc bc we all know we discuss that bc is the what is this bc bc is the magnetic field corresponding to the critical solenoid current ic magnetic field corresponding to critical solenoid current ic so if the magnetic field which we are applying uh, lacks than bc critical field then path of the electron will curved although will strike an node the but it will strike the anode but uh, the path will in the form of the curved now if b is equal to bc applied field is equal to critical field then path of the electrons will be tangential to the anode and that will form the circular motion you see in the diagram that first we start b is equal to 0 you see that is a straight line that is from the cathode towards the anode anode is in the uh, outside ring and cathode is inside ring now you see at b is equal to 0 the cathode towards the anode in the straight line on the next b less than is equal to bc then a small curve we will get now in the third condition b is equal to bc path of the electron will be radial you see on the bottom side that it will be the radial in the trajectory it is in the tangential to the anode in the circular form now fourth one b greater than bc in this case the path of the electron will be highly curved and they will not reach towards the anode and these are the conditions so b greater than bc is not considered here so these are the four point these are the four conditions where the uh, the the magnetic field change the path of the electron which pass from cathode to the anode now magnetic field b can be varied by varying solenoid current is solenoid current that is is and if the anode current ia is steadied as a function of the solenoid current then it will be unaffected the value of is if is that is a solenoid current less than ic that is a critical uh, current value where the value of is is greater than ic so and if unaffected if is is less than ic where is the value of is is greater than ic the anode current should practically reduce to zero thus ic can determined graphically by noting the point of intersection of the tangent then the first tangent draw at the region where the anode current is constant and second tangent uh, draw when the anode current practically practically reduced to zero first in the first case when it is constant anode current and the second ca case when it is reduced to zero now you see what is the now in the formula what is the bc bc can be calculated by using this mu not n ic cos theta where mu not we can calculate it as 4.10 power minus 7 divided by ampere uh, meter and ic is the critical value of the solenoid current for the cutoff in 
in, it is in the ampere and n is the number of the turns per meter of the solenoid and we can calculate the, it, it it is a fix as it is a customized from the uh, setup so the value of n is the fix so from here we can get the value of bc similarly we can find out the cos theta deflection we can find out of that is l divided by 2 divided by root of l by 2 square plus me r square rs square where l is the length of the solenoid that is fix that is given by the 0.3 meter and rs is the radius of the solenoid that is also given that is the customized through the ex with the experiment now in the magnetron arrangement electron basically moves under the simultaneously mutually perpendicular electric and magnetic field as we discussing that uh, the uh, circular path is formed and that anode will uh, anode will generate a electron beam that is coming from the uh, cathode ray and the radius of circular path is exactly equal to the half of the anode of the radius of that beam. Required centripetal force is provided by the force to do the magnetic field. So, we put it as m v square divided by r is equal to b c e v and here we can calculate the e by m r that we calculate that is r a divided by 2 v we are having already described then e by m we can find out by putting this value then v is equal to r a square divided by h into e by m b c square now from this therefore the graph plotted v versus b c square will be the straight line and determining by the slope we can calculate the e by m ratio as follows slope divided by i square divided by h now you see these are the two solenoid connections where we put like solenoids having the coil and that is connected with the voltage and current then we can change the value here second is the diode connections that is used in the e by m ratio setup these are the two these and now what is the procedure to perform this experiment that is, that is very important in the first part we connect the diode valve and the solenoid with the e by m apparatus through the cable and the patch cords first we attach the solenoid with the with the setup E by M setup where we are having the voltage and the current measurement ammeter. So, uh, so this solenoid connected with the E by M apparatus. Now we put the uh, valve well with uh, within the solenoid symmetrically along with the cable. Now, in the third step, we switch on the E by M apparatus and set the solenoid current to the zero means we are not applying the magnetic field that is equal to zero, B is equal to zero. Now, applying a constant anode, anode voltage, anode pole voltage that is a V approximately equal to the 2 volt that will change for the first instance we have to fix it that is a 2 volt and for we for this we wait for the 2 minutes number 1 we fix the we first we take the solenoid current 0 that is why magnetic field apply is equal to 0 number 2 we fix the constant anode potential V that is equal to 2 volt and we wait for the 2 minutes and we note down the uh, anode current in the micrometer at this value of 2 volt provided on the front panel keeping the solenoid current at 0. Now, we at the screen we are having a electron beam. Now, in uh, next step we apply the current that is the 0.2 ampere in the solenoid now we are changing the current in the solenoid that's why its magnetic field change now applying the some current that is the 0.2 ampere is uh, it is represented by is in the solenoid with the constant current source built in the e by m apparatus after that and note the corresponding anode current that is i a that is mu that that is unit is micro ampere that is in micro ampere so at a fixed anode potential that is the 2 volt in this manner we will increase the 
solenoid current gradually at at the value of the difference of the point 2 so 0 0.4 0 0.6 and so on and we will change the solenoid current and in this manner the magnetic field will change and will generate the magnetic field and so on we note the corresponding anode current in the micrometer so uh, the anode anode current we will note down by changing the solenoid current through 0 0.2 then 0 0.4 then 0 0.6 it means we are changing the solenoid current value and on the corresponding that we are calculating the anode current value that is in the micrometer and we note the reading and put in the table and at least 10 to 12 reading we will take for one set that is means we are fixing the anode voltage as the 2 then repeat this experiment for the anode potential say 3 volt 4 volt at extra and we will note all the reading it means we are having a 3 set of the readings 2 3 and 4 uh, volt at the uh, anode voltage now for this after getting the reading we plot a graph between the anode current Ia that is in the micro ampere and the solenoid current that is in the ampere. The first graph then we, we will plot that is the anode current and the solenoid current Ia and Is for each fixed value of the anode means uh, anode potential that means we take the 2 volt, 3 volt and 4 volt that will represent in the diagram preferably different symbols of the different value. The intersection of the tangent of the slope curve with the steady Ia value gives the critical solenoid current IC corresponding to PC critical magnetic field uh, corresponding to critical magnetic field we are getting the uh, different uh, uh, solenoid current IC. Uh, calculating the BC for each value of the anode potential using the equation that we would define previously then we plot a graph again anode potential V that we are changing through uh, 2 volt, 3 volt and 4 volt and corresponding that we are getting the BC square the critical magnetic field value then we can we will plot a graph V and BC from the slope of this we can calculate the E by M using the equation. Now you see thus these two graphs as we have taken the source from the uh, some side then this these two graphs will represent the tangent now see. Uh, here uh, one is the IS versus I, IS versus IC, IS versus IC and second is the V versus, v versus uh, BC potential versus magnetic field applied and then we take the slope from here and then we put this value and we calculate the E by M. Now observation in the observation table what we calculate we calculate the constant some values are constant which are given and which is customized through this uh, apparatus. Now first is the length of the solenoid that is given 0 0.3 meter second the diameter of the solenoid that is RS that defined by the diameter and defined radius is uh, then defined by diameter ds is equal to 0 0.6 0 0.065 meter that the total number of the turns in the solenoid uh, that depends upon the setup that mentioned in the setup also and the second b we calculate the constants of some constants of uh, constants for anode are given by as radius of the anode R is equal to 0 0.3 centimeter that is also given. Now this is the table where we put the value here we take the 10 to 12, 12 sets of uh, readings for this. Uh, first we note down the solenoid current which is in the ampere that is defined by the Is. As uh, we discussed that the anode potential will change so we are having the Four, 4 different values of the anode potential at the 2 volt, at 3 volt, at 4 volt and the 5 volt. On the corresponding that uh, we calculate the I, IC that is the that is that is defined in the micro ampere. For, uh, for this IS we calculate the various value of the IC by changing the value of IS we, co we get the corresponding value for the per particular value of the anode potential the IC we will get. In the next table what we calculate uh, we calculate the anode potential then the critical 
solenoid current I C from the graph that is generated, then critical magnetic field value B C that calculated by using the formula. After that, we will calculate the E by M ratio by using this. Then we will put the value in the formula that is B C square. Then we divide by B C square. Then then by by putting this value B C, we would put the slope. Then we can find out the E by M ratio. Then we take the average of that value. This is the this is the formula. Then we can 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 get the get the eight V divided by R A square divided by B C square. That is the formula to calculate the E by M. As all the values we are getting through the experiment, so we put this value. Now we plot a graph versus V versus B C. It will be the straight line and find find the slope of this line. Then we can find out the E by M by By ratio, coulomb per kilogram, we can find out the value. So, what result we will get? Experimentally, we observe the standard value of E by m. E by m experimental from the calculations. What we get after getting the diff uh, different value after getting the error correction, then uh, experimental graph. What value we get? Get E by m through the graph. first we get the calculation then from the graph then third what is the standard value of e by m ratio that is the 1.7 ten power 11 coulomb per kilogram is the charge mass ratio what are the precautions we can take to perform this experiment the reading should be taken with the utmost care because every reading is important the fixing of the value must be important the graph should be plotted smoothly and the tangents should be drawn at the appropriate positions so that the precise value can be calculated and uh, magnetic field which we are applying applying must be changing in a particular order as is given 0.30 at a interval of 2 uh, like 0.2 0.4 0.6 and so on and node voltage will be fixed accordingly without uh, deflection so stray electric and magnetic field must be eliminated and the noise correction should be there so the charge mass ratio is defined as electron charge mass ratio is defined as now some of the viva questions will be asked in this experiment like what is the thomson charge mass ratio what is this charge mass ratio as thomson data was converted into si unit the charge to mass ratio of the particles in the cathode ray beam is about 10 power 8 coulomb per gram the thomson found the same charge to mass ratio regardless of of the metal used to make the cathode and anode the value is the same it's not depend upon the depend upon the material it upon the metal which were which we are using for the construction of the cathode or anode the second question may be asked that how did thomson measure the charge to mass ratio of the electron it means uh, how we calculate we just uh, how this charge mass ratio calculated uh, just uh, he find the negatively charged particle that he discovered that is the electrons and which are very much lighter than the positively charged particles and these electron charge to mass ratio was measured by accelerating the electron through the voltage vx in this experiment we discussed that the anode voltage will change and because of this anode voltage will change the acceleration of the electrons takes place towards the positive charge plate and the magnetic field is applied towards it what is the next next question may be asked that what is the thomson method in 1887 jj thomson measured the specific charge e by m uh, the specific charge what is the specific charge some can ask what is the specific charge specific charge is the charge per unit mass of the particle so uh, if anyone ask that what the thomson discovered thomson discovered the specific charge that is a e by m that is a charge per unit mass of the particle so Thom then thomson discovered that the value of e by m was independent of the uh, independent of the nature of the electrode independent of nature of the gas which we supply towards the experiment and it is it is done in the vacuum the experiment done in the vacuum next what is the principle behind this jj thomson method or what is this e by m method in this method we determine the specific charge of the electron cathode then the specific charge of an electron can be determined when the electron moves in both the 
magnetic as well as the electric field which are mutually perpendicular to each other as a as the anode is applied then the electron beam generated from the cathode passed from the anode then it will be and then it will and it will move towards the it will move towards the screen fluorescent screen and the perpendicular magnetic field is applied so electric and magnetic field perpendicularly applied towards the electrons moving then so the net force on the electron is made to zero so next question may be asked that what is the charge mass ratio of the electron that value we will calculate it that is the charge to the mass ratio of the electron as given by 1.7/11 coulomb per kilogram where we have in the mass of the electron which is defined by 9.1 power minus 31 kilogram and electron is equal to 1.6 power minus 19 coulomb that we have calculated experimentally as well as graphically as well as the value has been given calculations we can done to calculate it but we should know what is the charge mass ratio that is 1.7/11 coulomb per kilogram now how do you calculate the mass charge ratio so charge mass ratio can be measured by the thomson which is thomson method there is another method that is the helical method so there are the various method but the principle is behind the experiment is same magnetic field pass through the through the magnetic field then it will be deflected towards the Uh, because of the electric and magnetic field, the deviation takes place in the beam of the electron. In the mass spectroscopy, the mass to charge ratio uh, can be defined by m by z and m by b of the, which is equal to the mass of the cation and divided by its charge. The mass of the molecular ion is equal to the molecular weight of the compound. Thus, the mass to charge ratio of the molecular ion is equal to the molecular weight of the compound. That is another method to define the mass charge ratio now what the thomson ray uh, uh, experimental proved what was the conclusion of this experiment thomson experiment with the cathode ray tube showed that the all the atoms contains a tiny negative charge sub atomic particles uh, that is called the electrons and means these electrons which is negatively charged particles are generated and uh, the plum padding model of the atoms had negatively charged electron embedded within a positive charge so that can be uh, can be fixed why e by m ratio is important it is very important because we measure the e by m ratio of the electron where uh, that it allows uh, to gain the better understanding of the newly discovered particles also when we know the previously defined the particle what is the um, concluded from this charge this uh, this tube consists of the anode and cathode negatively charged charged particle produced then this made of this tube is made of the glass and this is uh, crooks tube and uh, which has a uh, two metallic plates one uh, one and uh, two electrodes so one having the el electrode second is the anode one end is connected to the positive terminal and another connected to the negative terminal and high voltage is supplied to the anode and we are having another part that is uh, that this uh, this tube we put the solenoid uh, is the uh, used to pass the magnetic field this plates connected to the positive terminal anode and the the plate connected to the negative terminal is the cathode in the in this cro tube and the tube is filled with the gas and uh, the electron beam um, uh, produced independent of the gas and in the discharge tube experiment at a very high voltage and low pressure and electrical current was passed and due to this electrical current the stream of rays originating from the cathode pass through the tube and these rays are called the cathode rays after that uh, in this experiment e by m after that it passed through the solenoid where we applied the magnetic field and uh, this beam is deflected what is the helical method the helical method even where a cathode ray tube is inserted in the solenoid and the e by m is determined from the condition for focusing the deflection of the electron to the spot on the screen what we are getting we are getting the spot on the screen and that is focused by applying the magnetic field and uh, this has been modified by substituting the alternating current 
in the solenoid and simultaneously supplying the voltage to the deflection plate proportional to the solenoid current. As we know that the solenoid current will change, the magnetic field will change and then this will affect the path of the electron beam. Then all uh, for this the result all the electrons move in the spiral of the same radius and the pattern observed is a portion of the circle provided the beam that is why we are getting a spot on the screen. By adjusting the solenoid current until a full circle just appears E by M may be reduced. The result obtained were consist consistent with those of the method using the direct current. Uh, now, why J. Thomson experiment with the cathode ray tube? Because it generates the negatively charged particle that is the electron and we require the electron beam and then we calculate the E by M ratio. Thank you very much.